Happy Thursday evening. I mean, no. Yeah, it is evening. Happy Thursday evening, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day and being safe out there. You know, it's raining. It's pretty cold, but all in all, today was a great day. I hope you all are being safe and, you know, social distancing and just having it, enjoying your day today at school, work, whatever. No, I had school today. That was a great day, but I'm home now, so glad to be home and just ready to relax and just you know, chill out. No class tomorrow, so I'm going to enjoy. So how are you all doing this 5 o'clock hour? Great, I hope. So today we are on Leviticus chapter 3, the Levites. Yesterday we left off on Numbers chapter 2, the arrangement of the tribal camp. And so that was where we were talking about where the Lord had the um, Israelites, he had them camp outside of the um, tent of meeting, uh, far distance from the tent of meeting. And they were camped according to their, they were together based off and according to their divisions, their, their clan and families and stuff. And they were like set off in like four different groups. Um, on the south, the north, the east, and the west. So that's what we we're reading on yesterday about that. And so today we're going to be reading the next chapter of the Numbers 3, the Levites. So we're going to get into that. I'm in the NFD. Whatever you choose to um, read out of whatever book um, or app, it's fine. Or just listen, however. So we're going to get right into it. So let us do a word of prayer and then we'll read our chapter heavenly father we thank you we come to you with a humble and a grateful heart and we just say thank you for today thank you for keeping us safe thank you for providing for us thank you for all that you have done for us lord and for waking us up in our right minds lord and for your safety your love your peace your guidance your word thank you for your son thank you for everything god God, I ask that you please forgive us of our sins right now, Lord, and just cleanse us, Father. Reveal to us every sin that we have committed before you, Lord, and help us to repent. And Father, help us to change things about ourselves that aren't right and acceptable to you. And God, I ask that you please pour out your wisdom and your understanding upon me, Father, as I am about to read Numbers 3. As many may follow along with me, I ask that you will bring understanding and wisdom upon their ears father and help us to see and understand what it is that we are reading father help us to not interpret it in the wrong way or lean on to our own understanding father but help us to receive your word and help us to apply your word and help us to be blessed by your word father god but just continue to enlighten us in your word father and continue to show us the way father god Help us to gain all the information that we need so that we can gain more knowledge and wisdom in your word, Father, and learn more about you, Father. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us, Father, to be able to read your word. Thank you for this blessing. Thank you for everyone that's listening, Father God. Bless us all as we read and as we share and as we learn and grow together. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. All right, so Numbers chapter 3, the Levites. This is the account of the family of Aaron and Moses at the time the Lord talked with Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of the sons of Aaron were Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Remember, Aaron had four sons, which two of them ended up dying because they uh, disobey God's commands and they made an um, unauthorized offering. So the Lord had consumed them with fire. So two of them died and he, he has two remaining. Those were the sons of Aaron. Those were the names of Aaron's sons, the appointed priests who were ordained to serve as priests. Nadab and Abihu, however, fell dead. I didn't know he was about, he was about to say that. So I could not, let, I could have left off what I just said, not realizing that this is what it was going to say, basically the same thing I just said. But Nadab and Abihu, however, fell dead before the Lord when they made an offering with unauthorized fire before him in the desert of Sinai. They had no sons, so only 
Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests during the lifetime of their father Aaron. The Lord said to Moses, bring the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron, the priest to assist him. They are to perform duties for him and for the whole community at the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle. Because remember, um, back in the first chapter, when um, he um, was having each clan to uh, serve in the army and he was calling the communities together and, you know, um, on the, in the first chapter, and you remember how um, as he was naming all the descendants of uh, Israel, uh, Jacob's uh, sons and uh, their descendants who um, were able to serve in the army, they were all counted because they were doing the census. And remember, he left out the Levites. He said, leave the Levites out because the Levites were going to um, help um, with uh, help around the tent of meeting. They were to do work um, there. Um, where did it say that? Uh, back in chapter one, verse 47, the families of the tribe of Levi, however, were not counted along with the others. The Lord has said to Moses, you, you must not count the tribe of Levi or include them in the census, census of the other Israelites. Instead, appoint the Levites to be in charge of the tabernacle of the testimony over all its furnishings and everything belonging to it. So that's what the Levites were going to be doing. They were going to be helping with the test, the tabernacle of the testimony and all the furnishings and everything belonging to it, they were going to be in charge and helping with that. So this is what um, this is what they were getting ready to do. They were to, they were getting ready to perform some of the duties for um, him and for the whole community at the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle as God had commanded them to do. Um, they are to take care of all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, fulfilling the obligations of the Israelites by doing the work of the tabernacle. Give the Levites to Aaron, and his sons, they are the Israelites who are to be given wholly to the him. Appoint Aaron and his sons to serve as priests. Anyone else who approaches the sanctuary must be put to death. The Lord also said to Moses, I have taken the Levites from among the Israelites in place of the first male of in place of the first male offspring of every Israelite woman. The Levites are mine, for all the firstborn are mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set apart my, for myself every firstborn in Israel, whether man or animal, they are to be mine. I am the Lord. The Lord said to Moses in the desert of Sinai, count the Levites by their families and clans. Count every male a month old or more. So Moses counted them as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. These are the names of the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Morari. These were the names of Gershonite clans, Libni and Shemia, the, Kohen, the Kohath, Kohathite clans, Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel, the Merorite clans, Mali, and Mushi. These were the Levite clans according to their families. To, Gersh, to Gershon belong to, but I'm sorry, to Gershon belonged the clans of the Libnites and Shumites. These were the Gershonite clans. The number of all the males a month old or more who were counted was 7,500. The Gershonite clans were to camp on the west behind the so they were to camp on the west behind the tabernacle. The leader of the families of the Gershonites was Eliasaph, son of Lael. At the tent of meeting, the Gershonites were responsible for the care of the tabernacle and tent, its coverings, the curtain at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The curtains of the courtyard, the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard surrounding the tabernacle and altar, and the ropes and everything related to their use. Okay. So that's what they were responsible for. The leader of the family is a Gershonite. Okay. So So the Gershonites were responsible for the care of the tabernacle and the tent. Everything regarding the tabernacle, the Gershonites were responsible for, okay? 
So to Kohath belonged the clans of the Amorites, Isherites, Hebr Hebronites, and Uzeolites. These were the Kohathite clans. The number of all the males a month old or more was 8,600. The Kohathites were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. So they were, the Kohathites were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. The Kohathite, the Kohathite clans were to camp on the south side of the tabernacle. So south side of the tabernacle versus the Gershonite where they were camping. They were camping on the east, I mean the west on the west side of the, they were camping on the west side of the west behind the tabernacle and the Kohathites were camping on the south side of the tabernacle. The leader of the families of the Kohathite clans was Elizaphon, son of Uziel. Uh, they were responsible for the care of the ark. So the leader of the families of Kohathite clans were Elizaphon. They were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the article, the articles of the sanctuary used in ministry, the curtains, and everything related to their use. The chief leader of the Levites was Eleazar, son of Aaron, the priest. He was appointed over those who were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. Okay. Why is it responsible for So to Merari belonged the clans of the Malites and the Mushites. These were the Merari clans. The number of all the males a month old or more were counted was 6,200. The leader of the families of Merari clans was Zuriel and son of Abihel. They were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. The Morarite, the Morarite, the Morarites were appointed to take care of the frames of the tabernacles, its crossbar, the crossbars, posts, base, all its equipment, and everything related to their use, as well as the post of the surrounding courtyard with their bases, tent pegs, and ropes. Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp in the east of the tabernacle. Give me just a second. South, west, north, and Hold on, I'm just leaving. So the Morari were in the north. The Kohathites were in the south. And the Gershonites were in the west. And Moses and Aaron were in the east. So Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp on the east side, east of the tabernacle toward the sunrise in front of the tent of meeting. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary on behalf of the Israelites. Anyone else who approached the sanctuary was to be put to death. The total number of Levites counted at the Lord's command by Moses and Aaron according to their clans, including every male a month old or more was 22,000. The Lord said to Moses, count all the firstborn Israelite males who are a month old or more, and make a list of their names. Take the Levites for me in place of all the firstborn of the Israelites and the livestock. And the livestock of the Levites in place of all the firstborn of the li livestock of the Israelites. I am the Lord. So Moses counted all the firstborn of the Israelites as the Lord commanded him. The total number of firstborn males a month old or more listed by name was 22,273. The Lord also said to Moses, take the Levites in place of all the firstborn of Israel and the livestock of the Levites in place 
of their livestock. The Levites are to be mine, I am the Lord, to redeem the 273 firstborn Israelites who exceed the number of the Levites. Collect five shekels for each one, according to the shekel, the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 girls. Give the money for the redemption of the additional Israelites to Aaron and his sons. So Moses collected the redemption money from those who exceeded the number redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the Israelites, he collected silver weighing 1,365 shekels. According to the sanctuary shekel, Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. So that concludes our chapter reading for today. And so we see a breakdown of each um, of the different um, families um, that were the different clans that were where they were encamped at and um, actually not where they were encamped or well, where they were at where they were camping at. Yes, I'm right. Clans where they were to camp at. Some were camping on the west, some camped on the east. No, they didn't camp on the east. They camped on the west, the north, and the south. Of course, Aaron, Moses, and um, Aaron's sons camped in the east. But um, those who camped, the, uh, the Gershonites, the Kohathites, and the Morarites, they were the ones that were camped in the um, north, south, and um, west. And of course, they had different duties far as um, which furnishings and what they had to upkeep and take care of. So it was almost like them delegating, Lord giving them different things that they were to do. Hey, you do this, you take care of this, you take care of that, you take care of that. Not just one man taking care of all these different things, but delegating the chores between different people as to this clan, you take care of this, this clan, you take care of that, and this clan, you take care of that. So that's what we kind of see a breakdown of that. Um, what they were responsible for and taking care of. So that is that for the Levites, the Kohathites, the Gershonites, and the Morah, the Morahites, if I'm saying it right. So anyway, so I hope you were blessed today by our scripture. And we will resume tomorrow, God willingly, with our next scripture, our next chapter, chapter four, the Kohothites, the Kohothites, okay? Yeah. We'll resume tomorrow. So you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for um, listening. Thank you for um, thank you for being blessed by and just supporting. And um, thank you for taking time out for, of your schedule today to tune in again. And I just pray that you continue to tune in and come in and we just continue to learn and grow and share together and be blessed together by the reading of God's word. So I want you all to have a wonderful day and be safe. Um, continue to social distance and wash your hands and wear your face masks. Just be safe, please. And remember to be a blessing to others, to love on others, to pray for others, be compassionate, be kind in words and in action and humble yourselves before each other and be the light and be humble and um, help each other out by lending, lending a helping hand to help others that are in need. However you see fit, whatever God is impressing on your heart to do for someone else, do it. Even if it's not even a need, even if it, 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 it could be just something, just a thought that came to your mind. God blessed you with the thought, a wonderful thought to just go do something for someone. It ain't got to be, it doesn't have to be a need. It can be a want, but just being a blessing, just letting somebody know, hey, I thought about you and I want to do something nice for you and stuff. You just never know how to bless them. So, you know, just always think of good things, great things, and how you can just be wonderful and be a blessing to someone because you just never know. Uh, uh, just 
making that one person smile today off of something kind and wonderful that you did for them, that can go such a long way. And you just never know what you might have done for that one person. They may pay it forward and may want to do it to someone else. Hey, such, such, just bless me. It just did such a wonderful thing. And just imagine if it just continues to go on and just keeps going on. We'll find so many great, wonderful, um, giving, kind-hearted people to just want to be a blessing to others. So just always, always think of others and just wanting to bless someone with something, however you can do it. Even if it's just a wonderful text message or a voice message or a video, just sending them some kind words or thoughts or something. It's always something, something that came from the heart that God impressed you to do. Do it. Go with God's leading. God's always leading you to do something wonderful because you just never know what doors may open up behind something wonderful that you did for someone else. So don't hold back blessings. Give them. They're all there to give. So just give them. Just like God gives his blessings, you give yours to others just in little ways, small ways. They don't have to be big, gigantic things. They can be small things. But do some great things for someone today. Someone may be in need of it. So I always keep that in mind, y'all. So um, I will leave you all with a word of prayer. And we will talk back again tomorrow. Let us pray. Father, I humbly, I humbly come before you, Lord, with a thankful heart. And I say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you because you have been great. You have been good. In the dark times, the hard times, the rough times, in all times, God, you have been good. You have been faithful. I have seen it. I have seen it so many times, God, more and more and more. And I just thank you. I thank you for strength that you have given many of us, God. God, we can testify in so many ways, so many times of how good you are and all the wonderful things that you have done for many of us, Lord. So many things that you have done, God. And I just wanna say thank you, God. I wanna acknowledge that because you have been there, you have been available, you have been patient, you have been so many things, God. And I thank you for that. So many people can say the same thing, God. You have been available to us in so many ways over the years, God, since before we were created. And God, it's a wonderful thing to know that we may not be able to depend on man, God, but we can always depend on you, Father. You may not come when we ask or when we want you to, but God, you are always on time, and we thank you so much for that. Thank you for being a blessing. Thank you for being a great gift. And thank you for the gifts that you have given us in our lives, Father. Thank you for just always being there. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, God, who you sent here on this earth in flesh to die for us. Thank you for allowing him to pave the way to show us what it means to be loving and kind and humble and forgiving, all these different things. But God, Though we weren't here to be able to meet Jesus for ourselves, God, we're able to read your word to be able to know and get an understanding and a vivid uh, imagination of how he was, God, the things that he did and how he carried himself for them. You have given us an example of how we should carry ourselves. So, Father, as we have read your word, help us to understand it. And God, help us to apply it and do what it says, God. Help us to do what your word has called us to do, God. We know that doing your work, um, following your word and abiding in your ways, God, it will go well with us. Though sometimes it hurts, God, because some things that we want to say and some things that we want to do, God, because someone may have hurt us, God, sometimes it's not easy taking the easy road, the easy path, God, because sometimes we want to go off on people. God, we know that it's the right thing to do, God, because, God, we know that you're going to situate whatever it is, God, whoever may have hurt us, God, we know that you're going to situate it and you're going to work it out. So, God, thank you for allowing us to look past those who may have hurt us and allowing us to be 
the bigger persons by being the better example, Father, to lead the way, to show others what it means to be Christ-like. So continue to use us and show us how to do that and walk in your steps, Father. Help us to be kind and loving and obedient and forgiving and patient. Help us to be slow in anger. And God, when we do get angry, as your word says, help us to not sin when we get angry. But Father, help us to keep praying and help us to draw closer and walk with you every step of the way. Help us to stay on that narrow path that leads to you, Father. Not that wide road, Father, because we know that that wide road leads to destruction, but help us to stay on the narrow path that leads straight to you, Father. Help us all to get on that path and stay on it, Father, but help us to humble ourselves before you, Father, and pray and repent, Father, of our sins and turn away from those wicked things that we do. Help us to be happy and grateful that we serve a great God and help us to be about your business and doing what you have called us to do. I ask for your healing upon the sick, your comfort upon those that are mourning and hurting. I ask for peace, Father, in this world, God, upon many people, Father. There's a lot of chaos going on in different places of the world, God, and I'm just asking, Father, for your spirit to resonate in the hearts of many, Father God. Turn their and shift their attitudes and change it, Father. Bring peace, Father, in our government, Lord. You know the things that have been going on yesterday and stuff, Father. Many were hurt, incarcerated. Some even lost their lives, Father. But I'm asking, Father, for your mercy and your grace upon many of those who caused all these things to happen. Forgive them, Father, and help them to find their way, Father. Remove the hatefulness and the anger that is living deep down in their hearts and minds. Change it, God. We've seen you change many things, God. We know that you can change them too. So change what needs to be changed within us, inside of us, Lord. Bless us today. Keep us safe as we travel, Father. Take care of those who are battling addictions, Father. Take care of those that are homeless. Feed them, clothe them, shelter them, everything that they're in need of. Father, please provide, Father. Take care of our family members, our loved ones who are incarcerated, Father. Forgive them. Help them to be treated fairly, Father, but help them to be taken care of, Father, but help them to do their parts, Father, but forgive them, Father. Acquit the innocent and those who have been forgotten about, Father. Be with our leaders and authorities. Help them to use their power for good to be a blessing and help others, Father, but help them to do what's right. Keep them safe, Father, all of our leaders in power, all of our pastors, everyone in this world, Father. Bless our marriages, Bless our children, our families, our friends. God, bless our homes and workplaces and schools. Keep them in good standing. Father, just see us through this day. But Father, help us to lift up our hands before you, Father, and give you all the honor and glory and praise that you deserve. Help me to continue to come on here each day as I read each chapter, chapter by chapter and book by book and verse by verse. Continue to lead me and show me the way and help me to always be a blessing to others, Father. Sometimes I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm just on here, just doing this, Father. I feel like I'm not making a difference at times. But God, thank you for always confirming, Father, reaffirming for me, Father, that I'm making a difference in someone's life, Father. Even if it's not everybody, it's one person or two people, God. Thank you for allowing me to be able to make a difference. So bless this prayer. And bless all those that are listening to it, Father. Bless everything that you allow them to do with their hands, Father. Bless their minds. God, bless their lives, their families, their friends, their households. God, bless everything that they do, their ears, their eyes. God, everything, Father. Bless them, Father, at the sound of my voice, Father. Guide them, lead them, show them the way, Father. And make yourself known to them who you really are, Father. Help them to learn to love you and worship you and care about what you care about and serve you in the way that they were meant to serve you. So, Father, see us through this day. We thank you so much and we love you. Please bless this prayer. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my God. All right, everyone. Love you so much. Thank you. And I will talk back with you tomorrow. God willing. Bye.